Okay. So this is the third Sunday. Oh, can we get? Right there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the scripture reading for this Sunday is from First John four seven and eight. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love which tells you that our third candle is the candle of love. <laughs> All right. Okay. When Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, he told us to love God and to love one another. The two greatest acts of love in the Bible are seen in Jesus being willing to die for our sins and God be willing to let Jesus come to earth in the first place. On this third Sunday of Advent, we remember the gift of God's love to us in Jesus Christ. Okay, so now we the candle lighting you were gonna do, so you light the Okay, three. I light like the candles, I light like which one was... That one, that one, and that one. Okay, right. <laughs> Remember the five candles in the wreath represent the four Sundays of Advent and also Christmas Eve. We light three candles this morning. Again, we light the candle of faith. Good. The candle of hope. And today, the candle of love, which reminds us of God's amazing love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. <laughs> And, and we have a prayer at the end here. Heavenly Father, as we worship you today, surround us with your love and speak to our deepest Amen. needs. Let your love flow through us in all our contacts with people this coming week. In, in, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our, our scripture lesson and uh, thoughts today uh, the scripture lesson is nice and short. It's uh, Luke 1, 37, where the angel says to Mary, nothing is impossible with God. Mary and Joseph had experienced the visits of the angels and heard the plans about their future. We need to keep in mind that when a person sees an angel uh, or an angel tells them what is going to happen in the future, and I'm not just talking about, you know, biblical times. Um, I've had situations where uh, people have told me that they've had uh, visitations as well. Uh, the, the person who receives this word of prophecy from the vision from the angel, or maybe even from another human being, uh, that person still has to believe or not believe. It, uh, it doesn't really uh, automatically require or force somebody to believe. Uh, I, I've said before, and I, I think I believe this still just as strongly now as uh, 20 or 30 years ago when I first said it in a Bible study, that if Jesus were to show up into our life or an angel were to appear in our life and we had a conversation, um, our life would, in a relatively short time, go back to the way it is now. It, it might be this 
really wild experience for us and we might just be overcome by it. But there's something about those really strong experiences we have in our life. It doesn't take very long for us to fall back into the same way of doing things. I remember when I first had my uh, uh, heart attack, um, and that was uh, 20 years ago, probably now, 20, 22 years ago, and they put a stint into my heart. Um, I, I remember walking one day a few days later and saying, I am going to change the way I've done things. I will never go another day without walking for a long period of time. And of course, about three weeks later, I stopped walking because I don't like to sweat. I don't like to exercise. And uh, the next time I had a heart attack, I said, wow, this is really going to make a difference. And it hasn't made a difference either. And so I, I'm sort of aware of the fact that when some of these traumatic things happen to us and we make this commitment that says, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, chances are we might not. Okay. And, uh, and so I, I think we need to keep in mind that um, the, the visit of the angel uh, that is coming with what should be done, uh, but uh, or what will be done in this kind of case. But the response to Mary is wait and see. Uh, let's see what happens. The response of Joseph was let's take that into consideration and do something about it. The, the response of Zacharias, you remember in that story, um, he said, well, I don't think that's going to happen. And the angel says, well, then you're going to be mute until the baby's born. And so um, it was going to happen. And we need to realize that when God speaks to us, God is not necessarily telling us what we have to do, but telling us to believe in what he is going to do uh, in our lives. We don't know much more about Mary and Joseph. We do know that they were somehow married before they made the journey to Bethlehem. And I'm going to guess because of the timing of the scriptures, it probably happened in the five or six months uh, after she comes home from Elizabeth's and before they make the trip uh, down to Bethlehem. The angel told her that nothing was impossible with God. And to confirm that truth, the angel told her, Elizabeth, who you know is already uh, uh, old in age, and, and some have said probably close to 80 years old, that she was already six months along in her pregnancy. So Mary makes the journey to her cousin Elizabeth's house to learn more, I think, of what was God doing? Because if the angel says this to Mary, says something to Joseph, and she gets that information, and the angel tells her that Elizabeth is six months pregnant, and that's going to be confirmation for you, I'm sure she wanted to know what was going on and wanted to hear more of this story. So she took off to see what her future might look like. And Luke uh, tells us that she traveled to uh, Elizabeth's house and uh, she called out when she got there and immediately the baby, we know that baby is John uh, the Baptist, still in the womb, leapt for joy and the Holy Spirit flooded uh, the baby and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke, you, Mary are blessed among all women and the child in your womb is blessed as well. How can this be that I would receive a visit from the mother of my Lord? And at that moment, and I'm not sure that it happened much before that, we don't know that Elizabeth knew anything about uh, the visits of the, the angels. She might have some rumors of what happened to Mary and Joseph, but I'm gonna guess that at that moment, she was convinced that what she'd heard from Zacharias, that her child, John, would be the forerunner of the Messiah. Mary shows up. Elizabeth knows that the baby in Mary's womb is the Messiah. How 
is this, that I would receive a visit from the mother of my Lord. She proclaimed Mary to be the mother of the Messiah. Remember that her husband, Zacharias, has been told by the angel that their son, John, would be the forerunner. We did not know how much he'd been able to tell her about the angel's words since Zacharias wasn't able to speak. Now, we know that he got a tablet at the time of John being named and wrote on the tablet, his name is John. He might have written out a lot of things so that Elizabeth would know uh, all the story of what the angel had told, uh, but it's possible that <clears throat> she didn't know all the details that, uh, that he had floating around in his head. But she knew that Mary's child was the Messiah. I, I think Mary and Elizabeth had quite a, a number of conversations during the next three months where they told each other about the things that had happened. Zachariah might have been able to keep, fill in some things. He could have sat over in the corner and nodded uh, very comfortably when they would bring up things that, that they had heard uh, from the angel. Uh, and, and so it, it probably was a really good time for them for three months. But right here at the door, as Mary is responding to what uh, Elizabeth says, she says, all glory goes to Yahweh. I rejoice in God, my Savior. He's looked upon me with favor, and I'm just his humble servant. And she goes on to talk about uh, uh, all kinds of wonderful things that's uh, sung about now. It's what's called the Magnificat, uh, as the, uh, the words of Mary at that particular uh, time. We don't know whether Mary came home before John was born or after. Um, I think the story kind of lends itself to believing that she came home before because Luke talks about the, uh, the naming of John, the birth of John and the naming of John after he says that Mary went home and uh, he, he's trying to, it appears, set things down in as chronological of order as he can. Um, so nearing her third month of pregnancy when she returned home, I'm gonna guess that that was the time that she and Joseph uh, planned their, uh, their marriage and uh, began to uh, make a home uh, there in Nazareth. This idea that nothing is impossible with God uh, there, there's something for us to learn in this story that when, when God speaks, things get done. If all things are possible with God, shouldn't we be prepared for great things tomorrow? If all things are possible with God, shouldn't we be prepared for great things tomorrow? expecting God will always find a way. Mary should already know the history of her people by the time she's pregnant, that Sarah gave birth to a child at the age of 90, that the Red Sea was parted so the people could leave Egypt unharmed, the multitude of stories of judges like Gideon who conquered with his small band of 300 soldiers, armies far greater than he. Goliath was felled by a small stone from a young shepherd who later became a king. Daniel was freed from the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved out of the fiery furnace. She should know all of these stories. She would have heard them in her family growing up. And so why should she not be willing to accept that God could do great things, that nothing would be impossible for him? Why should she be surprised that Elizabeth was having a baby 
uh, near the age of 80 and, and maybe even that Mary herself would have the child, the Messiah. Remember the new Christmas song that's been out, oh, I don't know, probably 10 years or maybe a little bit longer. Uh, Mary, did you know? It seems like everybody wants to sing this song. Uh, it talks of things that will come in Mary's future. Uh, the wonders if she knew how special the child would be that he will walk on water and will give sight to the blind and, and calm the storm with his hand. Uh, the one phrase in that song even says that the, the baby you deliver will one day deliver you. I love that phrase. It's a, a, a great picture of Jesus becoming the Messiah of everybody, including his mother. Uh, and we've got the stories of what God did with the band of 12 and their struggles to bear witness to the faith that made it possible for you and I to believe today. Mary, did you know? Her faith in God's working in the past, I think, kept her focused on the task at hand and might have given her confidence that God could and would work in her future. God was bringing the Messiah into the world and was doing it through her. The power has always been of God and not ourselves, says Paul in 2 Corinthians. The solutions that God brings to our troubled lives are always greater than our comprehension at some point in the process. But God will make a way. I was listening to the Enlightened channel yesterday and there was a uh, Christmas song that I had never heard before. Um, it, it, the title of it was Expect a Miracle. And, uh, and one of the phrases in it was, God will make a way. And, and I like that phrase because no matter what our circumstance, no matter how bleak it looks to us at any given time, God will make a way. He continues to work all things together for good. He can do anything he says he will do. We just have to remember that he's God, and that means he does not do everything we want him to do, but he does everything that he wants to do. It is okay for us to expect miracles. Before Mary was to give birth, the emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus, called for all the people of his kingdom to be registered. And the registration took place in history right around 2 BC um, in terms of calendar dates. Um, even though we call it before Christ and after Christ, uh, Jesus probably was born closer to 2 or 3 BC than, uh, than at uh, 0 BC. But they required that every person in the kingdom would travel back to the place of their family's origin and be counted. Joseph was from the house of David, and that meant a trip to Bethlehem for he and his wife. When Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, the place was so crowded that they could not find a place to stay. They ended up spending their nights with the animals in a stable. Now, our traditional way of looking at it makes it sound like the, they arrived in Bethlehem, went to the stable, bore the child, the shepherd showed up, the king showed up, and the vision came to Joseph to leave the next day to go to Egypt. Uh, we, we really know that that story is uh, stretched out a little bit further, could be even as long as two years, uh, based on the timeline of uh, Herod's uh, wanting to go out and uh, remove all of the children from that area so that he could do away with the, uh, the coming king. But uh, during one of the nights they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth and her son was born in the stable amongst the animals. Softest place for the baby Jesus was a tiny manger filled with hay. So his mother wrapped him in a blanket and laid him there to sleep. 
question arises as to how much Mary and Joseph knew about the coming of the Messiah. I'm sure they spent some time during the nine months since the visits of the angels discussing what they thought the scriptures might say about the Messiah. They might have even talked with their rabbi about the concept. Who knows? It might have been one of those synagogues that was uh, teaching out of the Old Testament a lot about the coming of the Messiah. They might have been expecting a lot uh, to happen, and they might have known a lot about the coming of the Messiah. They, uh, they probably did not make known to the community. Well, the angels visited us. This is what they said. This is uh, the baby that uh, Mary has is from God and is going to be the Messiah. I, I doubt if they brought a lot of that up. Okay. Uh, looking back on the story, it's comfortable to us. But having a 13 year old girl, girl announced to her community that she believed her baby was going to be God's doing and the child would be the Messiah, that would probably cause a lot of stares and disbelief and um, shunning, uh, which probably was not where they wanted to be. And so they probably kept it pretty close to themselves. We don't even know whether they shared it with uh, their parents. Um, I'm guessing that they knew, this is just a guess, a speculation on my part, that they knew the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem because of the prophecies. And they might have early on wondered how that could happen since they lived in Nazareth. Would they have to find a time and a reason to visit Bethlehem in time for the baby to be born? Were the prophecies of Micah a little mistaken? They might have thought. How surprised would they have been when the decree came to their town? And you remember, it didn't show up on the internet in those days. Somebody would have walked into town, hung something up on a post beside a door that said, everybody has to move to the helm of their, uh, their ancestors and be registered. And how surprised would they have been when that happened and they realized that they were actually going to have to travel to Bethlehem at the time of the birth of the child. That might have been marveling at God's timing. Or they could have been complaining about the inconvenience of having to make such a long trip when she was eight and a half months pregnant. Now I realize it's not a long trip for us. It's only 90 miles. But for them, it was six or more nights sleeping on the side of the road when she was weary and tired. Or was she energized? by the excitement that she might have felt of the coming of the Messiah. When they arrived in the town, found there was no room for them in the inn, did they begin to second guess the words of the angel? Or did they in faith trust that God knew what he was doing, that he would somehow make a way for them? And when the baby decided it was time to come, I've, I've never experienced all of that, but I've been told that women don't have any control over the timing of the baby coming. Uh, I, I remember stories back in the days that Linda was pregnant uh, five times, four children uh, born, uh, that people would say, well, just get on the second uh, bunk of the bed and jump off a few times. It'll cause the baby to come quicker or walk more or drink more water. I mean, there were, there were so many things that you could supposedly do to make the baby come sooner. And now it comes in God's time when that baby is ready to come. Um, and they were still sleeping in the stables. Did Mary marvel or did she question and grumble? Did she see this as the perfect place for the Lamb of God to be born? Well, I look at that in hindsight and think, yeah, that is the perfect place. Might not have been for her, but it sure is good for us. 
Were she and Joseph content to follow wherever God would lead them and trust that he would make a way? So what about us? When things come our way that we have not planned for, how do we respond? COVID, fire, homelessness, out of work, medical issues, traumatic memories resurfacing in the wrong times, addictions, friends so far away and unable to, to go hug them and let them know how much we love them, mental and emotional struggles. There are so many things that our society and people in our society and friends of ours and even us are having to respond to. How do we who have faith respond differently than those who do not have faith? How does it help to have a belief that God loves us and cares for us no matter our circumstance. Hmm. Since this life is not all there is, can we place one foot in front of the other, continue down the path that God has for us, trusting in his goodness and believing that he will always make a way? for his good to come into our lives, that everything will work out for good because we love him and he loves us. Can we, like Mary, expect a miracle today, tomorrow, every day of our lives because we have a God of miracles who is our father and welcomes us into his family. So may Jesus bless you with wonder this week, with expectation and with confidence that no matter the circumstance, no matter your situation, God will make a way. Let's turn to hymn number